everybody, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 5, The Day in the Life of a Driver. And today, I have with me Mr. Matthew Cook. Uh, Mr. Matthew, um, you know, all our drivers out rolling. He had to stop at the terminal to get a little work this morning. Um, so it was pretty hard for me to find somebody. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, if, if everybody didn't know it, freight, the freight has picked up. Uh, you can make all the money you want to make right now. So I know you hate kind of being here at the terminal, but since he was here, I figured I'd get him on the podcast and let him kind of talk about uh, the day in his life. Or like what does, you know, when he go down for his 10 hour break at night, you know, once I take my 10 hour break, you know, I want you to kind of talk to the audience and, you know, about what do you do? From that, from from the time you wake up until the time the truck get moving, um, talk to us about it. So when I wake up, as most everybody, you're not awake. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I I get the coffee going. I open up the curtains, see what's around me. I look around, see how people are parked. Mm-hmm. If I need to knock on any doors, mm-hmm. what the weather's like. If it rains, snowed. Um, usually I'll get up, you know, stretch, go outside of the truck, see what the temperature is. And then I'll go inside and and just kind of mentally break down what I need to do before I get that truck started and get rolling. So, you know, all truck drivers should be doing a pre-trip in the morning. Everybody does theirs maybe a little bit different, but the main thing is you got to check that truck out because these trucks have a lot of stuff that can go wrong, break, or be close to breaking, and you don't want it to break. So, you know, I wake up, I get the rand up and going. Sometimes it takes a little bit. But uh, by then, the coffee's up. So you drink a little coffee, you look at the RAN, you check your messages, you look at your logs from the previous day, you certify them, and then you uh, start your pre-trip. You know, you log on duty, you get out of the truck, pop that hood, check your fluids, check your belts, you you just look at the frame, shocks, brakes, uh, anything that, that rotates, turns, moves, holds the truck together, you check all the bolts, make sure nothing came loose. You'd be amazed. You know, you think one thing it's great one day, and next day, where to go? Or, oh, my gosh, it's falling off. You just got to check all that stuff. So you start from front to back. And once you think that thing's ready to crank up, you you get cranked up. If it's cold, you want to crank it up kind of early, make sure, you know, it gets warmed up because those trucks, Mm -hmm. those diesels don't like the cold. Um, and then you just, I just go front to back. I check the lights. I check the tires. I check the air pressure every day. Um, because all it takes is one little screw that you're not going to see that you parked on in the middle of the night. And next thing you know, your tire's down to 35 PSI and it looks good until DOT pulls mm-hmm. you over or something. Um, and you just go front to back. You check your drive, drive shafts. I mean, you just, uh, anything, uh, nuts and bolts. Yep. It just, uh, you know, um, I had a trailer the other day. It was great one day, and then uh, the next day I had a load on, and all the bolts were and loose the, on the. On and the and I'm glad, and I'm glad that you mentioned that. Being, and the reason I'm glad that you mentioned that because I was going to put you on the spot about uh, something though. So you've been here eight months, and it's pretty hard to have eight months of a perfect. It's pretty hard to have thirty days of just a perfect life as a truck driver. And then we have some guys. You know that 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 report the DVIRs, and then you have some guys that you know. I'm not really sure if he's actually checking it or not. Really hoping that everybody's doing the DVIRs, checking and reporting anything that's wrong. But it's pretty hard to be a truck driver and go 30 plus days without having anything go wrong on your equipment. So the question that I was going to ask you, I'm still going to ask. For whatever reason, you find anything wrong, what's the process? Well, you you see where it's at, and you take a, take a note of it, and and then what I do is I finish because you might have multiple things wrong with it. Mm-hmm. So you finish your your pre trip, and then you get up in the truck, and, and you there's a you know you hit your options, and you go to DVIR, add DVIR, and it, it it's step by step. You know where where is it at? What's wrong with it? Is it something you can fix? I mean, sometimes yesterday I had a broken wire on a turn signal. You know, I can. I can put that together and fix yep. it. I still log it, yep. and then I put I repaired it. I certified a repair, and you're good to roll. If you can't, tell you what, driver support is top notch here. Yep. You, you, you can't get anything better than that because you call them up and they'll have somebody out there usually within an hour, depending on where you're at. But they don't man, leave you hanging. Man, man I I'm, I'm I don't think you see how tickled and how impressed I am with you because you know if somebody looking at this podcast, they probably gonna think you was coached. 
on what what your morning is. And I and, and I just want the audience to know, no, he wasn't coached. This is just him talking about the day to what he does, and that is absolute right, right, with exactly what you do, man. And I'm so glad because I never thought about that. You, the part that you say, well, I, I go ahead and finish my pre-trip. I don't, because, you know, in my head, when you find a problem, you immediately call somebody. But you said it perfect. Well, there may be something else wrong. I'm actually not finished with my uh, with my, with my my pre-trip. So, guys, pay attention to him. And if you need to rewind this back to kind of listen to him over again, then do that. Because that's absolute perfect, exactly what you said, man. You don't stop your preacher up on the first problem that you find because there may be more issues, and I've never heard it put that way. So I just wanted to highlight that. I'm sorry to stop you right here in the middle of this deal, but I'm getting so excited talking to you because, first of all, I know you're a good driver. I've never heard anything from you. You say I've been here nine months, and I hadn't heard a word about you. And uh, so I, I, that, that, that tells me a lot. You're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. you stand off everyone's radar. I'm just here to make me a little money. So that's that's so perfect, dude. So I'm gonna ask you something because I know sometimes with guys there are some things that's just not DOT standard that they just kind of do a little extra. Everybody has their own way of doing their pre trips and post trips. Kind of talk to me about what's this special thing that you do that all truckers may not do, and it ain't anything that's required. It's just something I want to do to take extra caution since I want to protect not only myself, but all the people around me. Well, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I always over strap my loads. You know, there's no such thing as, you know, over securing stuff. Mm -hmm. So if I see something that, that, you know, I could throw another strap on, Mm -hmm. you know, I make sure all my straps are used. Um, yeah, that's above DOT regulations. I mean, I usually strap a hundred percent plus or more of mm-hmm. what the load is. Um, yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I try to keep the truck real clean, make sure all the lights are clear. You know, that no dirt on them. You know, that's part of keeping your truck clean. Um, other than, than drinking a little bit of coffee before I do my pre-trip, which I don't think is DOT, but uh, you know, it's it's hard to say. I just you know, I I drive and i work for boyd but i kind of treat it as like my own business because i don't want to get dinged by the dot Mm -hmm. i've been pulled over i've had i've had i've had my uh inspections and and i've passed but it's because you take great care of of the ride you're in and plus that ride's got to get you home not only do i work for boyd but i work for my family there you go so yeah if there's something i see you know like uh, if there's a valve stem cover missing Mm -hmm. or something I'll, i'll try to find one put it on you know, uh, just just stuff like that. Make sure the tread is wearing even on the tires. You know, when you got your tread depth, you just check them. But you know, tread depth wear is an indication of something going wrong. If if it's a little wonky, you might want to say something. All right. So now we've got to the part where we're actually moving the truck. <laughs> so guys, it takes a lot. I, I, a lot of guys, it's just it's hard to sit here and kind of explain what goes on. But I can imagine, you know that. You know, 30 to 45 minutes is very intense because if there is a lot of components on the truck now that you really need to check. And like you said, all the nuts, all the boats, well, you have tracked and trailer. That's a lot of nuts. That's a lot of boats. But you check it because you want to make sure that I'm not being stopped down the road with an unnecessary issue that I probably could have caught doing my pre-trip. But now that we're rolling, is there anything else that you do once you got the truck going? I'm headed to my destination. Kind of talk to me about uh, now that I'm moving into my destination. Is there anything that you do in between there that you want the audience to know? Well, before I move, uh, you know, the last thing, I guess it's pre-trip, you make sure your route is still clear to get to your destination. Yep. You know, is there any traffic? You know, car could have crashed, caught on fire, heaven forbid, but... You always want to make sure that your route is still available mm-hmm. that you had the day before. Um, and then and then I would start rolling, and then I would pay attention first, you know, 50, 150 miles, depending on how far away. But I don't hesitate to stop in a shorter period of time than you normally would. You mm-hmm. know, usually I stop within less than, a, than the first hour mm-hmm. rolling. I'll do another check of the truck. Yep. Make sure none of the, nothing come loose on, the, on my uh, load securement. Make sure none of the brakes are hung up. Uh, make sure all the tires aren't smoking hot, you know, yep. and just uh, 
I may go to the bathroom because I drank all that coffee during the pre-trip yep. and then I get back on the road. And and he said it perfect, guys. Uh, that first 50 miles is important. I don't You don't really hear guys talk about that a lot. I'm so glad you mentioned it because, you know, you're getting into the warmer season now. And um, as you know, we haul roofing. Um, I just can use felt paper as an example. Well, you know, felt paper is tar. And uh, so if you, if you load it in – you know, you may load it in Chicago this time of the year and everything may be fine. Well, as you get closer and closer to, you know, south, it, it starts to warm up a little bit. And then, especially when you get to the extreme hot, what do tar do when it get hot? It, it gets south. And then what happens then? If all of us start getting, getting south, then it starts getting looser. Your straps start getting looser because it's starting to shrink. Um, so that's absolutely awesome. And any other material, uh, sometimes when you load some of this stuff that's in crates, you know, sometimes when you're moving, hitting bumps, it kind of move around your straps, start getting a little loose. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's actually what you're supposed to do within your first 50 mile, kind of stop and check the load that you have to make absolute sure that you got it secured right. So, dude, you're saying all the right things up here today. And I, I wish I could have you a lot longer on this this podcast, but unfortunately I can't. But before we get out of here, I just want to see, is there anything else that you want to offer the audience or any truck driver out here that's, out, that's trying to become a professional? I would say, like, I know on boy trucks, they got those floodlights in the back. When it's mm-hmm. dark out, as long as there ain't no traffic right behind you, turn them things on, man. Make sure your straps aren't flapping in the wind. There's nothing more scary than seeing a truck going down the road with a big old load on it and these, all these f- straps are flapping around. They ain't holding nothing. You got to yep. pull over and, and tighten them things up. And, and there's a lot of loads that, you know, steel buildings, you, you got to pull over several times. Yep. Retighten those straps. So use use the equipment and uh, you know don't don't be afraid to stop pull over in a rest area someplace safe where you can get out with that bar and, and tighten those straps up and check your lights and because lights will go out in, in a mile you know one time is good next time you got a bad light and you know keep extras on hand and swap them out. That's, that's awesome. Well, guys, um, I hope you guys are as excited as I am about this episode. And uh, if you're looking to see it, you can find us on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and any other social media site. And uh, to any driver out here that's looking for a truck driving career versus a truck driving job, go boy. it.